Hey there teachers, welcome to this book review video about this fabulous book right here. It's called Why Is My Piano Black and White? And it's by Nathan Holder. This is a really interesting book. So Nathan got in touch with me to see if I would want to review it and I was delighted to when I saw what was inside. I really don't think there's another book like this and I'm excited to dive into it with you. What isn't special about this book? This is really unique. The only thing I could compare this to that's vaguely similar is the books um, Why Beethoven's Threw the Stew and Why Handel Waggled His Wig, if you know those. But those are about classical music history. And this is really different because it's for kids and it's about the piano. It calls itself the Ultimate Fun Facts Guide, which is what I put in the title of this video. And I'd have to agree with him. I really think that it is. It's a fantastic tour of the piano. What I really love about it is that it is genre agnostic. <laughs> it takes us from classical pieces, but right the way through to blues and pop. And it really doesn't discriminate when it comes to what types of composers and what types of music that it's in including. I want to read a short excerpt to you now so that you can get an idea of the writing style and the kinds of things that are included. So there are a lot of stories of different artists here, uh, composers and performers and various different people throughout the piano's history that are important to this musical instrument that we all love so much, right? There is also some general information about the piano and some fun facts around there, but mostly it's about these different characters from history and from present day. And so I wanted to read one of those to you so you can get a sense of the book. This is uh, Nina Simone, one of my favorites, so I just chose her at random almost. All of the stories are fantastic and in a similar style to this. So it says soul and R&B, Nina Simone is the first person, 1933 to 2003. And then it gives her where she's from, Ty Tryon, sorry, North Carolina, uh, USA, USA. And then it says, born into a poor family, Simone was playing the piano in her local church at around four years old. She studied classical music and performed in her first concert at 12. Her first name was actually Eunice, but chose to perform as Nina Simone because she knew her mother wouldn't approve of her playing non-religious music. Her first album, Little Blue Girl, 1959, was a success with both singing and playing a mixture of jazz standards and songs from musicals. Simone wrote several songs during the civil rights era that protested the treatment of African Americans in the southern United States. And she included... She accused the music industry of hurting her career after some of her songs, such as I Wish I Knew How It Would Feel to Be Free, 1967, and Why the King of Love is Dead, 1968, were viewed as politically radical. But she continued to perform globally and record in countries such as England, Switzerland, and France, creating hits like To Be Young, Gifted, and Black, 1970. In 2000, she received an, a Grammy Hall of Fame award to go along with her four Grammy nominations, two honorary degrees, and Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction. She has been an influence for many musicians, including Elton John, David Bowie, and Michelle DeGiocello, can't pronounce that, Sculptor Zenas Frudakis created a eight-foot uh, sculpture of Simone, which is placed at Nina Simone Plaza in Tryon, North Carolina, and even contains some of her ashes. And then the next person is Donny Hathaway after that. So that just gives you a flavour of the kind of book and the, the level of the writing. So I'd say it's definitely not for young, young students. It's not like a kid's picture book. There definitely is a bit of reading there. But each one story is really digestible. And I think it's going to be great for anyone from, uh, you know, at age 10 up, I would guess. But it depends on their individual reading level, of course. I'm definitely going to be keeping this in my studio's lending library for my own students to borrow and also for us to explore during workshops and things like that where we can read excerpts together and discuss them and use them as a jumping off point. 
It would also be great to give to students at a particular stage of their study, and it would be a great one for any voracious reader to explore in their general exploration of piano. Each one is a self-contained little story, so it's great for dipping in and out of um, and exploring with your students. You can Google why is my piano black and white to look this up, or you can go to thewhybooks.co.uk and we'll leave a link in the description below. I hope that you love this book. I really enjoyed taking a look through it myself and I think it's a really fun one to explore.